Number 11, looking for answers. When you don't know what you're looking for, you'll probably not find it. When you don't know where you're going, you'll probably not know when you get there. When you don't know what you're doing, you'll probably not do it well. I remember sitting in English class one day back in high school. I was never very good in English. I was too busy working on the important matters like football, basketball, and running track. Well, it was Friday afternoon and we had a football game that night. You can guess where my mind was. After I'd spiked the ball in the end zone, I was listening to the deafening roar of the crowd. My mind gradually drifted back into English class where the teacher was saying something about present participle. Now, I had no idea what a participle was, but it didn't sound like something I needed to know. It didn't sound good to me at all. Well, I knew the mere fact that it was present either meant it was a current situation or something present in the room. Rick, Mrs. Miller, my English teacher, said, probably realizing I had not been paying attention, can you find the present participle for us? Now, I don't know whether to look on the floor, the ceiling, or out the window. Yet, trying to appear as innocently intelligent and concerned as possible, I looked around the room for a few seconds before responding. Uh, what? Uh, ma'am, I don't believe I understood the question. Could you repeat it again for me? Can you find the present participle, Miss Miller said again. And with sheer brilliance off the top, my mouth said, no, ma'am, I don't see it any place, but I wouldn't worry about it. I'm sure it'll turn up somewhere. I never did figure out what the present participle was, but it must not have been as bad or serious as I thought, because when I said that, everyone in the room laughed or snickered. I was relieved, having added a little peace of mind to an obviously troubled teacher and bluffed my way right out of a potential embarrassing situation. I said all that to say this, what is intercession anyway? No, it's not. I know you said prayer or something similar, but technically speaking, intercession isn't prayer at all. Intercessory prayer is prayer. Intercession is something a person does that he or she can do in prayer. Now, that's about as confusing as a present participle, isn't it? Think of it this way. Agreement isn't prayer, but there is the prayer of agreement. Faith isn't prayer, but there is the prayer of faith. In the same way a person can't pray the prayer of agreement until he or she understands the meaning of agreement. See, a person won't be very effective in intercessory prayer until he or she understands the concept of intercession. Are you still with me? Before we define intercession so we can define intercessory prayer, we're not only going to do so literally, but we will define intercession in the context of number one, God's plan for humankind at the time of creation. Number two, the disruption of the plan by the fall. Number three, God's solution. In other words, we're going to see the concept of intercession in these settings and allow them to help us define it, see. This will accomplish three things. Number one, it will help you understand the concept of intercession so you can understand intercessory prayer. Number two, it will enable you to see Christ's role as the intercessor. Our intercessory prayer will always and only be an extension of his intercessory work. This is crucial and will become clearer as we progress. Number three, with that kind of knowledge, it will make you the most spiritual one in your prayer group.